What's happening, guys? Chris, VA Travels, still here in New York City. I'm in the Bronx, and I'm going to visit the Van Cortland house. It's the oldest house in the Bronx. And walking through Van Cortland Park, on my way to the house back there. And I don't know, I don't know the occasion, but it looks like they've got little American flags on these graves. And I don't see a way to get into this. Well, I see an entrance way over there, but I'll find out what this graveyard is. Oh, and if anybody wants to know how to get here, I'm staying in Manhattan. You take the red, the one train out here, and this is the very last stop. It's the Van Cortland stop, and it's right over there. So it's uh, a quarter mile from the house, so easy to get to. So there it is, built in 1748. And for anybody new to my channel, I normally visit historic sites in Virginia, but uh, every now and again, I, I take a trip out of state. So yeah, I'll up here in New York for a few days and check out this old wrought iron fence. Thing's pretty rusted out, sitting on concrete blocks. There it is, big stone Georgian house kind of unique made of field stone you'll see brick around the windows built in 1748 and I have to figure out how to get inside actually I thought this might be the entrance but uh, I see some people walking must be some trails back there and this gate to, would take you out to the old Albany Post Road you would take it north up to Albany the capital of New York uh, take it south to, into Manhattan near one of the airports okay it says 1916 right there A little bit of an elaborate walkway down there. Pretty cool. You'll see a turnaround. And all right, see the heights over there. I don't know if that would be Manhattan. We crossed, I think that's still a little bit too close to be Manhattan. Um, we're a little ways in the Bronx. See, some people would consider, consider this lower Yonkers, but I'm um, sure it was an impressive sight. Uh, you pulled in on, on your carriage, if I'm assuming that was where the, uh, the carriage turnaround walk up the stairs and you see this thing oh, all right so yeah let me uh, let me go ahead and find that entrance so I think I just need to walk around over there and around back of the house this is a prison window and I'll let you read built of Holland brick and stone from the old sugar house on Duane Street used by the British as a prison for American soldiers so pretty neat. And let me go ahead and take a walk around this thing. And you'll see this building over here. I don't know if this might've been an add-on. It's got a stone chimney. That's cool, a little hyphen right here. And again, field stone. I wonder if this came off the Hudson. Uh, I don't know, but yeah, brick wrapping around. Got a little cellar door right there. And kind of just a little stoop right here. Just a little walk up. And check out this knock. I'll walk up. I always like to look at these lock plates. And what is this? Some sort of ring or something? But a little lock plate. And this is, uh, well, I thought it was a little bit heavier. But uh, anyway, all right. So let me walk around, take a look at the front. The sun's out now. I wish I'd have brought my sunglasses, but it's been gloomy uh, the last couple of days up here in New York. All right, little right up uh, over here. Van Cortland house built by Frederick Cortland. And he actually died before the house was completed. 1847. And again, oldest still standing house in the Bronx. And there's another Cortland house uh, up in Yonkers. I'll have to look to see if uh, you're able to, uh, to visit that. And down here, Van Cortland House. Here in 1781, to deceive uh, the British, General George Washington camp, kept campfires burning to throw them off while he and his army uh, escaped across the Hudson River. Pretty neat. George uh, Washington actually has stayed here several times. And up on these lintels right here, these are grotesque masks. Pretty unique. I wonder if that was a Dutch thing. I have to ask about that. And that one's broken off. Another kind of stupid, looks like that door knocks a, a little bit bigger. 
and same lock plate right there. And is that Medusa right there with uh, snakes? Wrapped around her head to the left, another. And just a bearded guy over here. This one's kind of chipped off. And over here, uh, just on the register, 1968. And I'll tell you, the Van Cortlands purchased this property 1661. And that's about the time the English took over. But yeah, these guys, the Van Cortlands were Knickerbockers, which, uh, who are New Yorkers with a Dutch ancestry. And built again by Frederick Van Cortland. He actually died before it was completed. So it was passed to his son, James. His son, James, died in 1781. So then it was uh, passed on to Augustus. He's kind of the main owner of the house, uh, James's younger brother. And he lived in the house until he died in 1823. He was 95 years old. And uh, the Van Cortlands lived in the house for 140 years until it was sold to the city in 1886. It became a museum in 1897. So wow, 100 and almost 30 years. This thing was a, uh, has been a museum. All right, let me walk around. I'll have to find out what the uh, little keystone on that lintel right there. And I have to figure out what this uh, building is. It's too fancy to be any sort of slave quarters. So yeah, this Van Cortland uh, Park, pretty nice. Pretty windy on this wide open uh, field, but I see some uh, soccer, uh, soccer nets back there. People walking their dogs, uh, people running about this house. Again, made of that native field stone, vernacular English Georgian style house. Okay, so 1747, 1748. Uh, five generations of Van Cortlands uh, lived here. Uh, the plantation was sold. I don't think these guys know what uh, plantations are up here. Uh, museum opened in uh, 1897, so all kind of what, what I just went through. So let me take a look at this guy. Almost looks like a, a German uh, officer right here. He's got his tri-cornered hat. And this would be Major General Porter, uh, General State of New York, 1886 until 1894. Josiah Porter. And let's see, he reputed to have been the first Harvard graduate to enlist in the Union Army during the Civil War. Uh, first Lieutenant in the Massachusetts Volunteers, 1861, promoted to captain that same year. 1865, he commanded the 22nd Regiment of the National Guard of New York. And in 1867, he received the rank of major. So, pretty distinguished uh, officer. I have the sun right behind it. Cool. Uh, before I go in, I'll also tell you that John Adams stayed here and the British actually occupied this house during the Revolutionary War at one point. Okay, so yeah, check-ins right around the corner. All right, guys, in the East Parlor and just take a look at some of the furniture. And this little keyboard mini piano is called a spinet. They think it's made in New York. It's not original to the house, but it's a Baker Harris spinet. Pretty interesting. Made in 1771. I don't know if you can see it written there. It says Baker, Baker Harris, 1771. And a little shell on the apron. Cool shell design right there. And there's Augustus right there. Nice painting. Check out the face on this fireplace. I don't know if that's wood or plaster. But cool broken arch up there. And this car table is actually has five legs. They think it was made in New York. Cool, a lot of ball and claw down there on the feet. And all right, a couple Chippendale chairs back there. Some Rococo on this mirror. All right, so the West Parlor and the Van Cortlands were uber Dutch. That's where this paint scheme comes from. Apparently this blue and orange, it's a Dutch pattern. And that might explain why the New York Knicks are that color, Knickerbockers. But yeah, this clock, pretty nice. And that thing used to play a tune on the hour. Pretty nice. And has some teardrop pools right there. Pretty cool, little bun feet down there, tobacco twist. And okay, kind of a shell back Queen Anne style chair right here. Let me just span around. Pretty nice tiles right there. And a little bit in need of a repair, but foot warmer down there. Uh, you, you know you had some money back then if you had a pineapple. 
at the table, a little sugar cone. Pretty nice trunk down here. Oh, and check out these floors. These were gifts to the family, these kind of eagles, griffins. I'm not sure what they are. And check out this door. The hinges, check out how high this uh, handle is. All right, so the dining room. Check out this wallpaper. And that's a Dutch tile back there. Again, pretty nice spread. And over here, this is original Van Cortland family china. cool little lock plate on that let's walk upstairs all right we're upstairs and this is a dutch chamber it's not original to the house they just set this up to make it look like what a one room home dutch home would look like on lower manhattan so i'll just pan around uh, press over here check out this chair some cool spinning right there. And a press over here. Check out this clock. Oh, more of these Dutch tiles. I'll let you take a closer look. Is this guy fishing? And they try to get fancy and make these purple. They might be kind of faded. They look blue, but they're trying to go for purple. So yeah, this is, uh, he did it all right in this one room. This is where you cook dinner. So we'll get some more of these tiles. Hmm, I wonder what this is. Uh, there's nothing in there, but pretty fancy little cabinet. L-A-K. Oh. Check out the detail on this. And over here is where they slept. They slept in this cabinet. The parents slept on the top floor. You'll see their little stairs and the children slept below. And there are more of those Dutch tiles down there. <laughs> and here are some air holes. So, yep. This is what a Dutch family slept in, uh, early 1600s in Manhattan. Okay, coming into the East Chamber. Some samplers over here. And you always find errors, which were done on purpose. But if you look up here, you'll notice there's no J. And it ends with R-S-T-Y. Okay, heating up all the bed warmers and foot warmers. You can pause and read. You got your upholstered furniture a little bit nicer. More of those teardrop pools. Oh, check out that chair back there. stand over here. So now we're on the second floor landing. And this is one of the oldest known dollhouses in the country. Got it preserved in this case here. It has a Christmas tree too. 
Oh, the motherland right here, Amsterdam. Okay, light's hitting it good. Hi, boy. Bed warmers. Pretty neat. Oh, so we've got the landscape over here. Brooklyn Heights, Staten Island, Lower Manhattan. All right, so this is the west chamber. This is the master bedroom. And you know it's fancy because you have closets. <laughs> so a lot of wood paneling over here. And obviously not as fireplaces aren't as fancy up here. You're not trying to impress anybody. And check out this chair. Just a face back. It looks like the left side is chipped off there. Oh, wash basin. Okay. A shell back. Kind of a mix between a, a Queen Anne and a Chippendale chair right there. I don't know why, but in the 18th century, they're like putting shells on everything. <laughs> Let's see, fireplace, a couple ink wells back there. Oh, check out those boots. Oh, that's a real fancy Chippendale corner chair back there. Oh, yeah. Cool desk right here. And just get this last piece of... Uh, Another little, small little shell back, Chippendale, Chippendale chair right there. All right, so head up to the third floor. And here is Sir William Johnson. Oh, the Duke of Devonshire. His Grace William, all right. Lord Bishop of London. Fancy wig right there. And the Reverend. Okay. Love walking on these squeaky floors. Uh, check this out. One of the tiles right there, Dutch tile. And these tiny little figures right there. Uh, kind of an Asian theme, it looks like, right there. Over here, we have a view of the south. So, Manhattan straight ahead. Uh, this is circa 1900. Oh, yeah, and that was all marshland when the area was settled. I don't know where they went. Oh. Kind of cool vaulted ceiling here. Oh, Edgar Allan Poe Cottage. That is near here, but it's currently not open. I wanted to go there. And each of these blocks must have, all right. Ah, uh, there it is, here we are. Well, I don't know if this is this house. Uh, this uh, pilgrim up there, natives. Font Hill, is that supposed to be Fort Hill? Font Hill, 1852. And the Van Cortlands used to have, on the river, used to have a bunch of mills, uh, flies right there. I'm gonna walk on over to the other side. Oh, John Hancock. Oh, cool writing desk. in case you forget the letters of the alphabet. <laughs> Old mercury, mercury mirror. All right, so we're in the nursery. Pause and read. And what does this say? Uh, cool lanterns. Okay, some little children's dolls. Uh, Check out that little baby high chair. It's pretty cool. Kind of some homemade furniture. Uh, <laughs> toothbrush. Mm. Old sponge. I wonder what, how 
house this is or what building that is. Uh, rocking chair right here. And we're about to enter the enslaved servants' quarters. Up here on the third floor, and this is where the slaves slept. Not very comfortable. And they're almost in these kind of cubicle pods, almost. Little bench right there. Uh, little cotton flax. Well, I guess we made it in a flax type brush. And where's that cotton right there? I don't know, but uh, yeah, I always like to look at these lock plates. Is this another one of these? I don't want to open it, but maybe some uh, some more slaves slept back here. And runaway advertisement from the New York Gazette, 1733. All right, here's another. And this slave, Samuel, uh, he was sold off to Madeira. Yeah, the island of Madeira, and that's not where you wanted to be if you were a slave. You didn't want to go. The further south you went, the harder it was for you if you were a slave. Uh, just growing sugar and whatnot, that is very, very hard work. And this guy, yeah, he just disappeared into society. So he made it, he made it safely, he escaped safely. All right, so just finished the house tour. And I don't know if I had mentioned earlier, but this is where you check in and the tour is free. Or at least it's free right now. She said something about it being Black History Month and then next uh, uh, month, uh, Women's History Month. So yeah, they might charge you a few bucks this summer. But anyway, so I'm gonna get out of here. All right, guys, as always, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. Uh, if you want to help me out, hit the like button. See ya. I forgot I'm on my way out of here. I just wanted to take a quick walk through this graveyard. So this is Memorial Grove at Van Cortland Park. Uh, it's a, a living tribute to local servicemen who lost their lives fighting for the, our country. And 21 bronze plaques are placed here beneath newly planted trees. So I'll just take a look at a couple of these guys. You'll see these smaller trees right next to these plaques. Uh, well, that's a bigger tree right there. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, so let me uh, just take a quick look at, at a couple of these. Mr. DeFranco, oh, out of Italy, all right. 1944, awarded a Purple Heart. All right, so uh, this one's whipping around pretty good. Take a look at this guy. And uh, the Bronx men and women. Okay, so this is uh, served our country in Vietnam. So yeah, that looks like that's just for some uh, Vietnam vets covering all the wars and this one's got a little rip in it must have been uh whipping around pretty good okay so this is mr renown luxembourg oh wow say 1945 again and i'll just look at a couple more so yeah 21 of these and you'll see some snow on the ground still over there uh mr herchik out of belgium oh bronze star and purple heart Okay, now, last one over here, Sergeant Jerome Merkowitz, oh, out of Austria, 1944, December 11th.